I just saw the other night, No Hard Feelings, with Jennifer Lawrence, Andrew Barth Feldman, and Matthew Broderick, among others. Directed by Gene Stupinski. Hopefully I said that right. It's basically a sex comedy. <laughs> If you've seen the trailer, you could probably guess the genre it's trying to be. This woman named Maddie, played by Jennifer Lawrence, answers a Craigslist ad where these parents are trying to get their son to come out of his shell by trying to get him to date someone in order to loosen him up before he goes to college at Princeton. Given that Maddie's in a really desperate situation, she uses this as an opportunity to pay off all of her financial debts. I don't know really where to start with this one, other than the fact that Jennifer Lawrence is in this movie. Anyone who's followed me for a long time, you know how I feel about her. <laughs> Hello? And for anyone who's new to my channel, she is my all-time favorite actress. I will watch anything that this woman is in. Even if the movie is bad, I will still go out of my way to see it. She has done some other things that have come out on streaming, but I am so happy to see her in a movie that's released on the big screen again, because I've, I, I've been missing that lately for obvious reasons. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna try not to go too crazy over her, but I just can't help myself. She's gotten some hatred online in the past for trying too hard to be relatable and realistic. Like, oh, I'm just like you, please relate to me. I mean, some people have accused her of that and saying that it's all an act. I've tried to come up with a really good response to that, but all I can really pull out is a... So? She's also had some personal reasons with her career, not being as active on the big screen, but she decided to take this project on because as she said in interviews that it was too funny to pass up. And watching the trailer, I thought this reminds me of some of those old school comedies. Well, I say old school, I'm talking about from my childhood, like early to mid 2000s. Other people have pointed this out too, like a Judd Apatow movie, 40 year old virgin and knocked up. This movie is definitely like that. Although I would say it's a little bit more grounded in some respects. I mean, for instance, she doesn't really live in a fancy house. Not that the main characters in those two films that I mentioned live in fancy houses, but a lot of comedies like this tend to have their characters in these really fancy, well-off properties that they live in. That to me is very unrealistic. It's a piece of fiction. I don't get too fussy over that stuff, but it's kind of nice to see our lead protagonist not living in some really nice mansion or a house that maybe some lawyer would be able to afford living in. She's an Uber driver and a bartender. With those two jobs, that's probably as best as she can afford, especially in a place like Long Island, where there's a whole lot of rich people living around there. And I kind of figured I figured that this movie was going to be on the raunchy side, but, uh, oh my god, was I getting that and then some. <laughs> there are some scenes in here that were just simply outrageously hysterical, and some that I thought were kind of a curveball thrown at me, particular one scene towards the end of the movie where she is involved with some other guy. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. If you've seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. But probably the best scene is when she's getting into a fight with these people on a beach. Yeah, I, um, I really enjoyed that scene. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence has done practically every kind of movie by now. Drama, true story, biopic, superhero, science fiction. Now she's done full on comedy. This is a chance for her to really show off her comedic timing. And let me tell you, she really, really sells it in this one. She also has that dramatic side to her that she's able to showcase in this movie. And she's just as good at doing that. But some of the scenes that she has in here and the way she just does not care what anybody says about her, Oh my god, I I love it when she does that in any movie that she's in. She does not care at all. And she's the kind of person that, even if I wasn't dating, I can see myself being buddies with her in some respects. Because, come on, we, we all need a friend like that who does not care and kind of empowers you to do the exact same thing. As for the male lead, Andrew Barth Feldman, I was kind of nervous about him, thinking that he was just going to be overbearingly unsympathetic because of his introverted nature. But no, I was really impressed with how he was able to convey it. I haven't seen him in anything before this movie, and I would like to see him get more projects in the future. And how he's able to portray that shy, introverted attitude. I can still be an introvert in some respects. I was a lot more so in the past. It really spoke to me, and it got me. And I've had some instances like that with some women before, where I wasn't really sure of myself. But thankfully, in some of those situations, I was able to inevitably break out of my shell. And when it comes to this movie being a comedy, comedy tends to be the most, no, actually, it is the most subjective genre that's out there in entertainment. A lot of times comedies like this tend to not resonate so well with people, but there's always an audience for something like this. And to see a comedy like this on the big screen again, I really hope that we get more like this. And there is one that's coming up pretty soon. I can't remember the name of it, but I know it's from the same people who did that movie Crazy Rich Asians some time ago. If you guys know what the name of it is, just let me know down below. The first half of this movie is 
basically a straight up comedy and it follows a lot of those similar tropes that you would expect in a movie like this but I found myself still fairly entertained by it but then when it gets to the emotional stuff where she starts to reveal certain things about herself that she's never really told anybody that's when the movie takes a really interesting turn and I found myself fairly invested in the characters after that. As for some other people that are in this movie like Matthew Broderick's character who's the father of Percy in this one doesn't really have a huge part in here but it is kind of neat to see him play the awkward father who doesn't really know how to properly let his son do what he wants along with the mother. I don't know the actress's name. They are the living definition of helicopter parents. And there's some other people in here, like Maddie's friends who are like the comic relief, like this one guy who looks like Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam. When he showed up, I thought he was going to be really overbearingly obnoxious, just throwing out one-liners left and right. But no, he's actually fairly good in this one, I, at least for myself. I think they found the right amount of comedic timing for him. And without being too specific about where the film goes, it doesn't really go the way that you would expect. It takes a very different approach, which I actually really liked. I'm not against the traditional, typical endings and comedies like this, but for myself, I found the execution of it to be fairly refreshing while also effective. As far as the jokes, it takes a lot to get a really big laugh out of me, but there are a couple of moments where I was howling to the ceiling with laughter. And as I said, there are some scenes that are a little bit, uh, saucy. I'm not gonna say exactly what they are. If you're someone who's really sensitive to the type of imagery that's in here, you might want to check out the IMDb content rating and decide for yourself. That's something that I didn't do before I saw this. I just saw Jennifer Lawrence in a movie. I said, okay, Jennifer's in there. Gotta see it. I'm not complaining or anything, but uh, I think I could have benefited from just checking up on that before I did so. But I had a really good time with this one, and I think more movies in this similar kind of category should be supported, along with the big franchises like Star Wars or Marvel or DC. Because I've seen a lot of people online, I'm not going to say any names specifically, argue that big franchises like Marvel, Star Wars, or DC should be thrown out the window and never be touched again in order for real films to come back. That's not the right message. Those movies should be supported along with other types of movies like this, like comedies, dramas, and so on. So if you want to see Guardians for the upteenth time, I wouldn't argue with you there. I mean, it's it's actually a good movie. But go support that along with a movie like this if you're interested. We live in a world where you can have both. It's possible to have that kind of stuff. Those are my thoughts on No Hard Feelings. Thank you guys so much for watching. What are your thoughts on this movie if you've seen it? you love it, like it, think it's a writer, or do you not care for it? Whatever the case is, just comment below and tell me what your thoughts are. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.